And welcome aboard. In this particular video tutorial, we're going to be explaining how to work with location items or points on your tactical map. Now, there are actually four types of points that may appear on your map. There are tactical waypoints, there are what we call sticky waypoints, there are photo points, and there are pre-planned points. Now we're going to talk about photo points and pre-planned points in a different video tutorial. So in this tutorial we're mainly going to focus on the waypoints. Now let's talk about the difference between those two types of waypoints. Let's start with the sticky waypoints. Sticky waypoints are named that because they're going to appear on your map all the time regardless of whether or not you're involved in a particular call. So these are types of points that can be placed on the map to, so to speak, customize it for your particular department. And those will allow you to see those points all the time. Uh, so you may want to use those for uh, notifications about road construction or lane closures or locations of Knox boxes and things like that. Now a, a tactical waypoint is different because the tactical waypoint is only going to be specific to the incident that you're actually involved in. And after that incident is over and you disengage from that call, all those points will disappear from the map automatically. So these points are useful for you in managing an actual incident. So if you want to place a staging area or an EMS rehab area or a triage area or a helicopter landing zone specific to that incident, then you can place these on the map. The other unique thing about tactical waypoints is they'll only uh, be visible to the other units that are involved in your particular call. So they're very specific to your call and you won't uh, have to worry about units on a different call uh, getting mixed up with uh, say your staging area or your helicopter landing zone because it's only going to appear on the map of the units that are involved in your in your particular call. So let's talk about how these are placed. Well, we'll go to the tactical map for this commercial structure fire and you can see that we've already got some waypoints on the map. These are the sticky waypoints because right now as you can see we're in the available status so we're not actually engaged in this particular call. So let's zoom in on this building here. This is a uh, appliance store uh, here in the Mooresville area and you can see that there's a waypoint back here at the location of the fire department connection that's a small FDC icon and we also have a waypoint indicating the location of the Knox box those are sticky waypoints I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here and we'll move over and we'll see what other waypoints we can find. Here's a hazard or general waypoint up here at this location. And I'm actually going to tap on these because remember they're always uh, interactive. So if I tap on it, it's going to tell me that the intersection is under construction and we can expect delays. Now again, these are going to be visible on the map all the time. So they're useful in keeping your map totally updated for any purpose and everybody can see them. So let's give this example. Let's say for uh, purposes of the, of the demonstration here that this particular on-ramp to the interstate was, uh, had one lane closed, so it was down to one lane. Well, if we come over to the map actions and we slide that out, you'll see that we have the availability to add a sticky waypoint. So we're going to click Add Sticky Waypoint uh, right there on that menu. And you see we get the instruction that says tap on the map where you'd like to add the point. So I'm going to come down here to this lane and I'm actually going to just tap right there on the lane. And then I get uh, the ability to, to put in a message. So in this case, I'm going to simply type in uh, one lane closed through March 15th. 
Now then I can choose an icon. Now there are all kinds of different icons for you to choose from. Uh, things that depict uh, areas where you cannot uh, locate an apparatus, uh, vertical height uh, limitations. Uh, there are some hazmat icons and I can just take my finger and drag right across here. Uh, there's radioactive, uh, truss roofs, uh, uh, all this, these types of things. Uh, so I have a lot of choices that I can use here, but for purposes of a road closure, I would probably just use the generic icon. So I'm going to tap on that and I'm going to say OK. And you can see that it instantly appears on the map. And within just a few minutes, it will uh, synchronize to all the other devices in your department. So any device that has uh, Streetwise is going to have this on their map. And again, it becomes interactive uh, on all those maps so that all you have to do is tap on it and you'll get the information that was entered, in this case, one lane closed through March 15th. Now the other important thing to know is that you can uh, edit or remove these sticky waypoints. So let's say that the uh, road department contacted us and said, hey, we're going to have to extend that lane closure through March 31st. Well, if I tap on this icon and then I tap on the box that contains the information, then it comes up for me to edit. So now I can simply change from March 15th to March 31st hit OK and we've edited that and after a few minutes it will synchronize and it'll change. I can also do the same thing if I wanted to change the icon. I can go into edit mode and uh, I could say oh you know what this lane closure is too narrow to even get a fire truck down so I could change that icon to um, no fire truck access if I wanted to. Um, and so now you can see that it's changed to no apparatus access one lane closed through March 31st. Now the other thing that I can do is if I no longer want that on the map because they've called and they've said, hey, uh, we got that lane open back up again, so now I can just simply tap on it and I can come down here and hit the delete button. It'll ask me if I'm sure I want to do that and I can delete it. And again, within just a few minutes that will clear from everyone's map so it won't be on anyone's map at all anymore. So I can place these on roads. I can also come over to uh, say a specific building. Uh, maybe this is a doctor's office and I wanted to indicate that uh, there was some kind of hazard there so again I can hit a sticky waypoint select a particular point in that in that in or around that building uh, tap on it and I could say um, this is where they store uh, the poisons and I can add details to that if I want to or I can just leave it as an icon now let's talk about the, the tactical waypoints because they pretty much work the exact same way. The only difference is if I slide this out, you're going to notice that tactical waypoint is grayed out. And that's because it's not available to me at the moment because I'm not actually engaged in this call. So again, as I said, the tactical waypoints are instant specific. So let's go in route and then mark on the scene of this call. And now that I've done that, when I slide it out, the tactical waypoint is available. So they're placed the same way. I'll hit Add Tactical Waypoint. Tap on the map where you'd like to add the point. Let's just come out here into the parking area. I'll tap it. And again, I get a selection of icons and the ability to enter a message. So in this particular case, let's say I was going to set up a helicopter landing zone. So I might say helicopter landing zone here and I can slide across and these are, are these icons are different they're primarily uh, uh, tactical uh, command and control types of icons so I can come down here and I can either use the helicopter uh, H or I can actually put in uh, the small uh, medevac uh, helicopter icon and I will just place that and you can see again it's there. Now once again this is only going to appear on the map of other units that are engaged in my particular call. So there's a lot of useful purposes for tactical waypoints. If there was an incident going on in this particular building I might want to indicate for instance uh, the location where I'm setting up the incident command so I can place the IC 
at this portion of the building. I may want to put a rehab sector in the parking area as well. So I might come over here to this side and tap on the map there and we'll slide across and we'll find the rehab section. There we are, rehab and we'll hit OK. And now we've got a rehab sector over there. I may even want to show the sides of the building as I've uh, laid them out. So I may want to say, OK, this is definitely going to be um, side A of the building over here. And then I may want to say, uh, I'm going to put side B of the building over here. And so I've laid out my operational quadrants on this building with these uh, with these markers. Now again, when the incident is over and I clear that scene, it's not necessary for me to delete these from the map because as you can see, I'm going to clear the scene and I'm going to go available. And as soon as I go available, um, because I'm no longer active in that incident, then those have disappeared from the map. Now one other thing to uh, remind you of, and we talked about this in the video tutorial on map settings, is that there is the ability to turn points on and off. So if you start trying to place points and they don't seem to show up, just make sure that you've selected to have those visible, those points visible. For instance, if I turn off the sticky waypoints here, you're going to see that, that that waypoint that I had disappears. It's still there technically, but I'm not able to see it because my device has masked over the sticky waypoints. So we'll turn it back on. So that's another good thing to keep in mind uh, when you're using the waypoints. Now all these waypoints are recorded in our uh, log. So when you're using the web portal, and we talk about this some in the video tutorial for the web portal, you'll be able to pull up and see when all those waypoints were placed, exactly who placed them, what the message was in that waypoint, and the exact latitude and longitude where that waypoint was placed. And even if you've deleted it, it's only going to mark it as inactive, so you'll still have a record of where it was placed. The other thing to remember is that if you're using emergency reporting as your records management system, uh, emergency reporting, as you probably have, have seen on our website, is a, is a strategic partner of ours. And we have the ability to feed all of your data uh, from the incidents into emergency reporting to pre-fill the NFIRS report. So one of the other things that you'll see is that these tactical waypoints, when you place tactical waypoints, that information will also feed into emergency reporting and they'll show up in the narrative section of the NFIRS report. So you've already pre-filled some of the information in your narrative report by uh, uh, placing these tactical waypoints and having them automatically go into the narrative. And it will provide the latitude, longitude, uh, the, the information that was entered in the waypoint and the exact time that it was placed and by whom. All that goes into the narrative as well.